Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the opportunity today to come together to worship you through technology with friends in many different locations. We thank you that you are with us at each of those locations because you are with us and in us and among us, and so we thank you for your presence today. Lord, give us ears to hear your word. Holy Spirit, open our ears, open our minds and hearts so that we can receive what you have for us today and to apply it and to understand it and to, and to glorify you in a greater way. And so we ask your help as we look to your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, it's a strange new world that we seem to be entering. The coronavirus has changed so much. Restaurants and gyms and many other businesses are closed. People are laid off. One-fifth of Americans are now unemployed. And for more than seven weeks, we have been socially distancing ourselves from one another, wearing our safety masks. Several weeks ago, I went to the grocery store, and I had my baseball cap on, I had my glasses on, I had my safety mask on, and the rubber bands that went behind my ears were too tight, and so my ears were sticking out like this. And I saw a lady from Brook Hill, I said, good morning. She said hello, and she just kept going. I don't think she knew who I was. So this is a strange new time into which we have entered. A lot of us are able to work from home, and grandparents are learning how to use Zoom and FaceTime to love on their grandchildren and to get hugs from a distance, and that's a good thing. We haven't had physical services at Brook Hill there in Yellow Springs for eight or nine weeks. But the good news is, in this, one of the pieces of good news is that the people of Brook Hill have been faithful in your tithes and offerings. Church finances are very healthy right now. I'm hearing that this kind of generosity is also being seen in many other churches as well. And so I want to thank you for your faithfulness, and thanks be to God. But we know that for some people, this time is a time of great stress. Not just fear of catching COVID-19, but financial stress. And marriages and families, some of them are struggling. People forced to live in close quarters under one roof, day after day after day. And it can be difficult. And so uh, there is emotional stress, in some cases loneliness, and uh, struggles perhaps with alcohol and addictions. I don't want to overstate this, but things will not be the same as we come to the end of this crisis. Some aspects of life may be changed forever, and things will be different at Brook Hill for some time to come. It may be that for a while only 50 or 100 people can be in our building at one time. Almost certainly we'll continue to have church online as we have begun to do, and there will be both the online service as well as the physical service there at the Four Corners in Yellow Springs. But we'll need to be sitting apart, somewhat apart from each other as we worship. We will not be passing the offering plate for 100 people to touch in a service. We will have to be looking for the most hygienic way to share the bread and cup of communion. It won't be wise to shake the pastor's hand or other folks' hands or to hug people, and that's going to make things difficult for many of us. Some of us will perhaps want to continue to wear masks for a while, and I certainly understand how senior citizens may be reluctant for some time to even come to physical church. So in many ways we seem to be entering a strange new world. Think with me for a minute about the scripture that Shirley Pritchard read for us several minutes ago about Joshua in his book in the Old Testament. The Israelites had been freed from slavery in Egypt, and that was great. But then they spent 40 years wandering in the desert. But finally the time came for them to enter the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised them. 
At this time, Joshua was their leader. He was a godly man. He was the leading general in the Israeli army and the leader of the nation. The land that they were entering would have seemed to them as well like a strange new world. They knew that it was agriculturally rich. The expression came to be that it was a land flowing with milk and with honey. They had seen that grapes grew phenomenally large there in Canaan. But there were people already living in Canaan, and some of them seemed like giants to the Israelites. Some of these tribes worshipped false gods who demanded that some of their children be offered as sacrifices in the fire. And many battles would need to be fought before the Israelites could live safely in Canaan. The night before they entered the land, God spoke to Joshua in the scripture that we read. He said, Be strong and courageous. The Living Bible puts it this way, Be strong and brave, for you will be a successful leader of my people. The Message Translation says it like this, All your life, no one will be able to hold out against you. In the same way I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength, courage. You are going to lead this people to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. And friends, I believe that God's word to Joshua several thousand years ago is a word to each of us today. God is saying to us, be bold and be strong. We could read that scripture from the message and apply it to ourselves. All your life, no one will be able to hold out against you. I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. God is saying to us, as he said to Joshua, have strength, have courage, and uh, give it everything that you have, heart and soul. God is telling us that he will be with us in this time and beyond this time. The God of Israel is our God as well. He is the master of the universe. As the song says, he is our way maker. He will make a way for us as we venture into uncharted territory. As the song says, he is our miracle work. Who would have thought that the dark cloud of coronavirus would provide the rain of even greater abundance to carry out God's work in Frederick? It's really a miracle in a certain kind of way. And the song says God is a promise keeper. He does not lie. God does not bait and switch. What God says, he will do. God is faithful to his word. Won't he be with us when we're forced to do things differently at church? Yes, he will be with us. Won't he be with you in whatever you're struggling with today? He is certainly with you, even at this moment. He is dealing with you in your heart and in your mind. He is there with you, either living in you or certainly there knowing fully what is going on in your life and wanting you to welcome him into your life. He is there for us today. And God will be for us a light in the darkness. He will provide everything, everything that we need today and in all of the days to come. Won't he be with you in your hour of darkness? He will. God will continue to help you. So be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And you need to say right now, Amen. Thank you. In the early church, God used persecution to spread the good news of Jesus. Kathy Moore read this scripture for us from Acts several minutes ago. The number of believers in Jerusalem had multiplied. There were at least 5,000 Christians there in that city, probably more. But persecution broke out. Several of the leaders of the church were put to death. Others were imprisoned. 
And so a lot of these Christians felt the fear, and they were forced to flee from Jerusalem. Some of them went to Cyprus, some to Syria, some to Turkey, and eventually to Greece and Italy. And it must have seemed to them as if they were entering a strange new world. But here was the consequence of that scattering. Here was the consequence of that struggle. The good news of Jesus was spread far and wide. Many Gentiles came to know and to love this Jesus of Nazareth, and the Christian church began a period of monumental growth that was, was uh, preceded by this scattering as a result of persecution. God was with those folk in that time of them entering a strange new world, and he will be with us as well. The coronavirus has pushed many churches to begin streaming worship services online, just as we have. And one of the results seems to be that more people are tuning in to online worship than came to our church when we were meeting there at the four-way stop in Yellow Springs. I've heard from two Brookhillians that their spouses, who never came in person to church at Brook Hill, have been watching these online services with their spouses, the two of them at home watching the online service together. Barbara Jordan is tuning in from North Carolina. Wade and Susan Martin are tuning in from Delaware. Last Sunday, my friend Merv Nixon, who lives near Bono, just outside of Dublin, he sent me a link, and at 8 a.m. last Sunday, I worshiped together with a congregation that was also socially distancing, and we worshiped together thousands of miles away from one another. It was a great service. I enjoyed the ministry of that pastor preaching from his living room on that day, not so differently from what we're doing here in Frederick. Now, don't get me wrong. Nothing will ever take the place of meeting in person to worship with other Christians. But I believe that online streaming opens a major new door of outreach for Brook Hill and for many other churches around the world. God can use this to build his church in every nation. Don't you think that's true? I know it's true. And on every continent, God is building his kingdom, and the gates of hell cannot withstand the forward movement of God's kingdom as his kingdom grows day by day. Hundreds and thousands of people in every nation and continent are giving their lives to Jesus Christ, and his kingdom is growing. Now again, I don't want to overstate my case. In many ways, life will remain the same for all of us in the weeks and months and years to come. And, strange new world or not, God is with us, and he is up to something good. God is up to something good today. And in these days. So let's thank him today. Let's praise him today. Let's believe in him today. Let's trust his promises. Emmanuel, God with us. And he is up to something good. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us today. We thank you that just as you were with Joshua and the nation of Israel those thousands of years ago, just as you were with the early church as they were scattered, you are with us in this time of coronavirus. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that you are up to something good. And we give you praise. Lord, help us to be part of your great plan as we move forward, not just today, not just next week, but in these weeks and months to come. Lord, Help us to make ourselves available to you in bigger ways, in greater ways, and to be used by you mightily as you do your work here in Frederick and far beyond. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.